Well, welcome to another edition of the Buyer's Guide. In this edition, we're gonna be looking at a ground bait that is, whilst it's been around for about a year, if not longer, it's still kind of regarded as one of the new kids on the block. It's a ground bait from the win-win range of ground baits. Some of you will know it, some won't. I think it's possibly a bit of a regional type of ground bait at the moment. It's the Verde Verde. I know loads of people have been catching bream on this mix, certainly around South Yorkshire, Southfield Reservoir and that sort of venue. So let's have a look at this mix, see how it mixes up and then we'll get it in the tank and see how it performs underwater. Well, this is the type of mix that I know a lot of people use and they've been using them on natural venues like Southfield Reservoir, these natural bream waters. It's a very fine mix and it's a, a green mix as well which I know is very very common and very popular these days. Before we start mixing it up let's have a quick look at the packaging and that'll just give us a, an idea of what that mix is all about, possibly how to mix it and let's see how fine it is and whether there's much feed involved within it already. Nice glossy packaging, it's got the Win-Win logo on, that is the name of the range and for those people that don't know, the Win-Win the range comes from Willy Worms. I know a lot of you use Willy Worms for your, for your natural baits, your worms, your maggots, your casters. There are several ground baits in this range that we will be looking at later on in this series. This is the Verde Verde Green Algae Mix, okay, very clear on there. Gives you an idea of what it's all about, it's the commercial F1s and bream ground bait, a superior quality green algae and fish meal based ground bait, so it's telling you it's fish meal, it's not cereal. A fine texture, giving great versatility as a mixer or additive. I know lots of people that have been using this mix just on its own, but I know a lot of people tend to mix it 50-50 with one or two of the other mixers, some of the darker mixers to darken it down a little bit, and some of the other mixers that might have a little bit more food value. So I know this is a mix that's been quite versatile. Um, for those anglers. Um, one kilo bags, okay, so that's a, a, a clear indication of what we've got there and we've got a window in the packaging there, you can see it's very fine. It's, um, it's a dark green colour, it's obviously going to go darker than that when we mix it but you can see it's very very fine that, there's no feed in there or virtually nothing there at all. We'll flip it over, we've got a little bit of text on there just telling you about the range and we've also got mixing instructions on there which I like you know because it, it just gives uh, anglers at all levels and all stages in their fishing an idea and the best way of mixing their ground bait so um, that's great to have that on there we've got another window there as well and what a lot of people probably don't know is they obviously refer to willy worms being uh, very active online but they have got actually got a shop on site as well and have done for quite a while they sell tattle there and lots of bait as well and that is the address there of the actual tattle shop and that's open to anybody um, obviously can just drop in like a normal tattle shop and get your bait from there so that's the the address there for that shop it's a, a ground bait I haven't had a chance to use yet. I've known about it for quite a while, but I know there are one or two of the anglers that have been using these mixers on venues local to me. Dennis White is one of those anglers as well. He's been using the win-win range, not only on reservoirs, but he's been using it on the canal system as well, around the air and Calder and all that area. So he's been catching lots of fish with this mix and other mixers in the range on those nat more natural type venues. It's a very fine mix, so I'm going to get this mixed up now. We'll just have a look what it mixes up like, how dark it goes, and we can also see if it can be over wetted um, and if it can be formed into a ball. So it's a fish meal mix, we already know that, it's telling us that from the packaging. Let's get it opened up, and usually the initial smell of it will really give you an idea of what kind of strength the fish meal is. Yeah, it's strong. <laughs> it's not really strong, but it's definite. It's on the stronger side of the fish meal smell, okay? There's not much else smell there, to be honest. Just, you know, it's a f it's fish meal, basically that. So let's get it mixed up. Lovely, nice and green. Let's get some water added to it, and we'll see how it mixes up. As with all the ground baits in this series, I'm not going to be using a drill. And that's because I know, well, straight away, the th first thing that's hit me about this is it just went almost like green paint just then. And that's because it's so fine. 
Um, I'm using my hand to mix this because I know most people don't use a drill. And this will also give you an idea of, you know, of any sort of, does it mix up a little bit lumpy or is it, is, it, is there much feed in there as well that's going to get, you know, soak all this, this water up. But as you can see, that is really fine. That initial water I've added there, that, it's almost gone like green paint. So that's obviously an indication of how fine it actually is. Really got strong that smell of fish meal now. The actual texture of it is very similar to one or two other ground baits that I've used. It's really fine. I'm going to be able to tell, you know, I can tell already that this is going to bind really well. As you can see, there's a few, a few lumps in there, but that's because it's a fine mix. I always put the ground baits through a sieve anyway, just about all the mixes I use anyway, even if I've mixed the ground bait with a drill. Um, I always put it through a, a fine sieve um, after I've mixed it, or when it's finished, is probably the best way of saying that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to this. But it's mixing up nice and fine. There are a few lumps in there. But like I said, they, they will go through the sieve anyway. Virtually no feed there. It's darkened down a little bit, as you can see. In fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop some uh, some of the unmixed ground bait just next to it. Well, it's not changed much at all. I thought it was going to darken down quite a bit. But as you can see from that, there's virtually no difference. Virtually no difference there in the actual colour. So virtually the colour that you see through the window on the bag is the colour that you're ending up with. Okay, for those that are keen on on uh, on you know your colour of your ground baits I know a lot of people are very keen on that sort of thing some people aren't bothered by colour of ground baits they'll use whatever colour so, you know whatever on any conditions where I know a lot of people on clearer waters um, certainly in winter like to use darker mixes so as you can see from that the stage that that ground bait is at after only two or three minutes is it's it's virtually the same colour as what it is through the window on the bag so what I'm going to do is, as with all the ground mates in this series, I'm going to give this exactly 20 minutes. I'm going to revisit it and then we'll see if we can over wet it and then we'll see how it's going to perform in the tank. But I mean, the, the initial thing to me that's hit me about that is, uh, we'll have to put it through a sieve because I do anyway, but, and um, there's virtually no feed there at all. There's no particles in there. Uh, particles of feed so it's very fine and I can see that's why the lads that have been using it I can see why they've been using it on the venues that they have you know places like Southfield when it's hard and, and like I say Dennis has been using um, these ground baits on the canal systems as well so that's when you're using kind of um, mixers with less feeding so I'm going to give this exactly 20 minutes and then we'll revisit it again and see what it's like when I've done that Well that's been exactly 20 minutes. I've just had to add a little bit more water to it because it did obviously dry out a little bit but over the course of 20 minutes that's that's what happens with ground baits. I put it through a sieve, not a really fine one but I put it through a sieve and that's come out really nicely now as you can see. It's a lovely fine mix um, and like I said I can see why that's suited to those sorts of venues. What I'm going to do now is just add, I mean I can see that this is going to bind okay. Um, it's, it's that sort of mix that as you can see it's sticking to my hands a little bit but it's not sticking to my hands like an oil. You know, like some of the um, the cereal mixers we used to use when we used to be put forming bowls of ground mate, It was like a, an oily stickiness. Well, this is not like that. Um, it's not oily, but it, it, there is stickiness there. So this is going to work well, as you can see there. That, I mean, that's you know, you're going to be able to boil that as well. So if you're going to feed bowls of ground bait, then this will obviously let you do that as well. If you're going to be forming bowls, if you're float fishing or you're fishing. You know, you're putting balls in over the uh, over a bomb line or a feeder line or whatever. So it will allow you to do that. What I'll do now is I'll add a bit of extra water. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to over wet this mix. But let's find out. You, you know, not all mixes you can over wet. Some of them just turn into a paste. Well, there you go. You can over wet that. So there you go. You can fish with that nice and sloppy, either on a pole line, um, a slop, or obviously you can wet in it. If you, if you want to fish it slightly over wet in a feeder. So that's good, so that's showing us it's it's nice and, and versatile. It's really, it's fish meal. I, I can't really smell anything else there. So, um, you know, that, I mean, that's what it's designed for, commercial uh, F1 fishing. That's why it's fine and, and bream as well. So it's all about the fish meal. So, you know, you couldn't use this if you wanted a sweet mix. It's not that sort of a mix, it's a different sort of mix. So let's get it in the feeder. Let's get the camera on the tank and let's see how it's uh, how it's going to perform under the water. So, as with all the 
videos in this series I'm going to fill a nice fine wire cage feeder with the ground bait I'm not going to pack it in too tight I've got a feeling I know how this is going to break down but we're, we're going to find out now I'm not going to pack that in too tight I've just put that in as though you're going to cast it about 40 to 50 meters okay just in an average depth water I'm not packing it in there and what I'll do is just pop this in the tank and we can have a quick look to see how it's going to break down Well, straight away you can see that there isn't any sort of a cloud coming off it it's quite a bit of air coming off it that's all but that's because it's been put through a fine sieve anyway and that's just starting to break down now i actually i actually thought it was would broke down a little bit quicker than what it is doing now because it's such a, a fine mix um but that is that's breaking down now slowly but it is it's breaking down much slower than i expected and that's only been packed in there a medium consistency so you know if i packed it in really tight Obviously it would have broken down much slower, but that's breaking down really well controlled actually from, from the edges. From from the either side of the feeder, either end of the feeder, it's not breaking down through the middle of the cage like we saw in one of the other mixes that previous in the in the series. Um certainly one of the other mixes was just breaking down, it was so fine it, it broke down much quicker. But that's breaking down really nice and controlled now, it's coming out the ends, but very, very steady. For how fine that is, it's surprising how slow it's actually breaking down now. No cloud coming off it as such, there's a bit of air coming out, just rising up. A bit of a haze around the bottom, but you always get that with these sorts of ground baits. Doesn't look like the colours changed much at all. So, you know, like the, the colour of any sort of a dye or anything like that, it's not really come off it. But that's really fine. It's very inert, so it's, a, it's not an active mix. And as you can see... There, there's nothing coming off it, there's nothing floating, there's no feed coming out of it or anything like that. That's great, no um, no cloud, nothing. So what I'm going to do is, as always in this series, I'm just going to lift the feeder out and we can just see how much of a cloud is going to get kicked off from it and if there is any sort of a cloud we can see how long it's going to linger and how long it takes before it's back on the bottom and inert again. So I'm just going to lift the feeder straight out. There we go. And that's kicked up a really... A really fine cloud look at that I've got a feeling that might linger quite a bit there are tiny bits of feed that's already gone down to the bottom but that's I mean that's a really fine cloud but it's a it's such a fine cloud there's no kind of feed in it it's just cloud and this is obviously a contained tank so if that was in in the wild as it were there would have been some tow or something which would have moved some of that out of the peg and it probably might have spread out a little bit more than what it has actually spread out but that's it uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's not back to normal yet. There's still quite a bit of cloud in that. If I just show you from above, there we go. All the larger particles are still down on the bottom. So they're, they're just back in place, back where they should be, but there's still some cloud there. Well, that was a really interesting test. I didn't expect it to perform quite like that. I didn't. I thought it would have broke down much quicker than it actually did. And like I said, that was only a medium sort of pressure. So obviously if I'd squeezed it less than that, it would have broke down quicker. But because of this sort of a mix, I could have packed it in really hard and it, it, it'd take ages to break down. So it's quite flexible that way. We can obviously over wet it as well, which is nice. So it's just sort of a really nice fine fish meal mix that you can use on venues when it's when it's harder because you, there's not little feed in there but it is fish meal it's not about a sweet fish meal mix so it is suited to those days when you're probably targeting bream and only bream and just like on commercials when you're just trying to target them better fish now this range of ground baits is obviously available through Willy Worms, but these mixes are available in shops as well up and down the country. So you might want to just check them out to see if there's a stockist near you. Willy Worms do have a shop and they've had a, a shop open there, a tattle shop where they sell tattle and bait for people to just go in there and get the bait and tattle at any stage. And these mixes are obviously available from that shop as well at the address on the bag earlier on in the video. These bags come in one kilo bags and they sell at £4.25. So it's it's very much an average price ground bait for the quantity that you're getting. But it's been a really interesting mix to look at. There are other mixes within this range that I'm sure a lot of you will be interested to see. And if you've used this ground bait, please comment below and let other viewers know how you got on with it, what you think to it, uh, and certainly where you are as well, so people know where they can get a hold of it. So yeah, it's been another interesting ground bait. It's nice to see a, a new name 
um, on the market to just hopefully just keep give us plenty of choice and variety of ground weights that are out there so thanks for watching thanks for logging on if you don't want to miss any of these future videos and you want to see more of them please give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos have a look at my other channel just there thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you all in the next video